I'm Andrew Kahanowitz here for the Mega News in Times Square, New York City, and this is my interview with Gary Francione. Vegan News, the show where veganism is normal. I'm Adam Kahanowitz, and I'm here with Professor Gary Francione of the Rutgers School of Law in Newark. Uh, welcome to the show, Gary. And welcome to Newark. This is your first time in Newark. So Good tell question. me a little bit about moral schizophrenia. This is something you mentioned in your book. Yes. And I want you to tell us, what is, what is moral schizophrenia in relation to our relations with other animals? And how does this tie in to um, the, the hype around Michael Vick being reinstalled into the, the uh, Philadelphia Eagles? Well, the... Moral schizophrenia is the notion that uh, we think in, very, in a very confused way about animals. On one hand, uh, many of us have non-human companions that we live with that we regard as members of the family. On the other hand, we stick forks into animals that are mm -hmm. uh, morally and logically not, not distinguishable from mm -hmm. the animals that we regard as members of our family. And, and we all would agree with the proposition that it's wrong to inflict unnecessary suffering and death on animals, yet most of us eat animals. And the best justification we have for killing 56 billion animals a year worldwide Wide, not including uh, fish and other aquatic animals, is that they taste good. So on one hand, we say we take animals seriously. Uh, on the other hand, we treat them as things. Um, mm -hmm. And on one hand, we love them. On the other hand, we eat so them. Refers to the so it, it refers to this, 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 this inherent tension and this confusion that on one hand, we, re we, we recognize the moral personhood of non-human animals. On the other hand, we don't recognize it at all, and we treat them as things. You know, there mm -hmm. are persons, there are things. On one hand, we recognize their moral personhood, their non-human moral personhood. On the other hand, we, we, we treat them as things. And so, um, now how, did, how this feeds into Michael Vick, Adam, is that, uh, you know, Michael Vick, uh, I, for, for those of uh, those three people out there who have never heard of Michael Vick, uh, was, a, um, was a football player, is a football player, uh, who was um, arrested and uh, pled guilty to uh, charges of, of uh, being involved in a dogfighting ring. And people were very outraged by this, and they've been outraged for several years about what he did. And now that he's joined the Philadelphia Eagles, people were upset that the Eagles took him, and they're upset about when the mm -hmm. question is, should we go and watch Michael Vick play and right. things like that? And these were like animal protection yeah, agencies. These, these were, yeah, exactly. I mean, these are a lot, I mean, I know, exactly. I mean, mm -hmm. I, when, when the Michael Vick thing first happened in, I guess it was 97, there was an outcry from the public generally about it. You know, people said, ah, oh, this is really horrible what he did with dogfighting. And I wrote an essay then that was published in the Philadelphia Daily News. Uh, it was called We're All Michael Vick. And, and in that essay, I basically said, look, you know, what Michael, Michael Vick likes sitting around watching dogs fight around a pit. The rest of us like to sit around a barbecue pit roasting their corpses. I mean, what difference does it make? He does what he does because he, enjoy it, uh, he enjoys it. Mm -hmm. Those of us who eat animal products are doing it because we enjoy it. What difference does it make? And I have to tell you, that essay, um, which um, it, it was interesting because I wrote the essay and I sent it to the newspaper. And they took it within a matter of 15 minutes. I mean, they literally, I, I literally got an almost immediate call back. And they said, could we take this? And I said, yeah, you can have it on the condition that you don't change anything. Because it was a long essay. It was a, it was a, it was a considerably right. long so essay. They published it so the they published thing. the whole thing. Yeah. And I got probably, in the first couple of weeks, I must have gotten like 1,200, 1,300. I got, I got well over 1,000 email messages. And they were very interestingly, not evenly, but almost evenly divided. They were... There were slightly more that were very favorable, saying, I never thought about it this way. This is an interesting way of thinking about it. Thanks for bringing this to my, you know. Th and then I got the other half of the people wanted to kill me, and they were very upset about the fact that I was comparing them to somebody who, um, who, who, did, who engaged in dog fight. They were, mm -hmm. I, that I was comparing them, the, just because they're meat eaters, with, uh, uh, you know, somebody who fights dogs. I suspect also there was a certain number of those people who were upset because they didn't like being compared to a person of color because this is still America in 2009, which is a deeply racist place. And and, and so, um, and I think there was probably some of that, but um, but that's you know, uh, but that's the, the the notion of moral schizophrenia. I mean, th this is why I think the animal interest, the animal issue, is so very interesting. Adam, it, it, that although when I when I'm talking with people about veganism, one might say, well, but that's just such a that's 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 a place that's so far away from where most people are right now. Mm -hmm. That um, isn't that ridiculous or idealistic to think that you're going to move them to that into to, to that direction and the answer is most people already accept the basic principles which should lead them by on their own to veganism mm -hmm. I'm just helping them see the implications of what most people already believe most people that I meet will agree with the proposition it's wrong to inflict unnecessary suffering sure, and death sure. on animals once you say you agree with that 
you give me 15 minutes, I'll get you to veganism. All right. Now, now, some people would say, well, that's just going to scare people away, or what we should do is, is we should actually do vegetarian education because that's easier. Yeah. Now, can, I'd like to no, hear actually, your comments on that. No, actually, I think it's more difficult. No, I think that's more difficult. Than it, right? you, so you think it's more difficult? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, because, because anybody who thinks about it for a second is going to say, well, what's the difference uh, uh, between... Uh, Flesh and dairy. I mean, right, you know, right. anybody who really knows the facts. Let me give you an analogous situation. Um, I, I I used to be invited. Uh, I used to do a lot of uh, anti-hunting rallies and uh, you know these demonstrations against hunts, sure. particular hunts. And I remember once being as one of the last ones I did. I remember being at this uh, this place and I I was uh, interviewed by some local media, and uh, the uh, w woman who interviewed me said, well. You really do have a, uh, why don't you just be honest about your secret agenda, or your, your undisclosed agenda or whatever, your hidden agenda. And I said, well, what's that? And she said, the fact that you don't think people should be eating meat at all. And she said, you're, just, you're not just opposing this hunt. She said, you think people should not be eating meat at all. Mm -hmm. And I said, I, I, I said, yes, that's absolutely right. And actually, I said, I would take that further and say, I don't think people should be eating animal products at all. I said, well, what would ever make you think that that was something that I ever tried to hide at any point in my life? Right, right. And she said, um, well, you know, do, do, is that what you, is that your position? I said, absolutely. I said, I said, I'm opposed to this hunt. I said, but I'm opposed to people eating all animal products. Uh -huh. And then shortly after that, the people who had organized the rally, the animal people who had organized the rally, said, why did you say that on television? You know, why, did you, why didn't you just keep your comments to the hunt? They, they didn't like that you said no, that. No, they didn't like that. I said, they, were very, they, were, they were actually, Adam, they were very upset that I had said that. And I said, um, I said what, why are you upset? And they said, well, because people are going to think it's too radical. I said, no, 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 no. I said, listen, I said, if somebody is sitting watching the news, and they see that you're demonstrating against the hunt. Mm -hmm. And they think that this is just about the hunt. I said, if they think about it for more than 30 seconds, um, they're going to say, well, gee, what's the difference between, you know, we go to the store, we buy meat, and those animals, they're, they're, you know, they, they have a worse life than the animals in the woods. The animals in the woods at least are free for a while, and someone comes with a gun or a bow and arrow and kills them or tries to kill them or whatever. And, um, you know, and, and it, may be a, it may be a rotten way to die, and they may die slowly and whatever. But nevertheless, you know, do they really suffer more than the animals that, uh, that we eat, that, you know, that, that it's perfectly, no one's, no one's challenging us on eating those animals. Mm -hmm. And so, it, it, you know, it's like, it's like all single-issue campaigns. Once you start portraying something, I don't care whether it's hunting or fur or whatever, once yeah. you start portraying certain forms of exploitation as, 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 as morally more problematic than other forms of exploitation, then you invite people to say, well, if I'm not, I'm not going to give it all up, why should I give this piece of it up? That's why you need to challenge them to say, no, no, you need, if you take this seriously, you need to give it all up. And you really do recognize that. You, you, you already accept what I'm about to tell you. Um, you just haven't seen the implications of what you already believe. So I don't think, I th and I think it's, it's fundamentally problematic to say to people, go vegetarian first. Don't you know? It, it, to take that take that first step of being a vegetarian, I think is problematic because first of all, it it's dishonest. It makes people think that there's a any sort of distinction. I don't care whether it's an empirical or a moral one, but that there's any sort of meaningful distinction between eating flesh and eating other animal products. There is not, mm -hmm. absolutely not. And and what you're doing is actually encouraging people uh, to believe that there's such a distinction. There isn't. And what happens with a lot of people when they go vegetarian, they don't go vegan, they end up eating more dairy products, which actually may increase net suffering. Not mm -hmm. that I think that that, you know, I mean, I, whether it does or not, I think it's wrong. But, um, but I think as an empirical matter, it may end up increasing net suffering and death. So, so my view is, is that, you know, you ought to be frank with people right from the beginning and tell them, look, uh, tell them the truth. You know, the truth is always a good thing to tell people. Um, and tell people the truth that there is no distinction between flesh and other animal products. Do I look okay? Because I haven't played. Do I look okay? <laughs> look at me. Okay. Okay. Well, that's true. That's true. Yeah. Okay.